we will now understand the conduction of urine we have seen the process of urine formation that is through ultrafiltration selective reabsorption and tubular secretion we have also seen the normal composition of urine and certain abnormalities which are seen now we are trying to understand how this urine which is formed gets conducted and is eliminated from the body so conduction of urine to understand this we will draw a simple uh, diagram where we would make the kidney a little bigger and then the bladder a little bigger so that we understand this entire process when we make kidneys we know that there are two parts the outer cortex and the inner medulla part so this outer part is cortex which we call the renal cortex and the inner part where we see those pyramid like structures that is the medulla part and in this medulla part we see these pyramid like structures and I am making just few so that we understand what exactly happens here. So this inner part is the renal medulla. Now let us place the nephron in the kidney. When we make the structure of nephron, we see that Bowman's capsule or rather complete Malpighian body that is Bowman's capsule and glomerulus, PCT and DCT. These are the parts which remain in the cortical region and it is only the loop of Henry which comes into the medullary region. So here we are trying to draw a small nephron so that we know what happens here. So this is Bowman's capsule, this is PCT, the loop and the coin part that is DCT. This DCT opens into collecting duct. So this is the collecting duct. Each collecting duct receives the filtrate from almost 8 to 10 nephrons. So this blue tube which we have drawn here, this is collecting duct. And it receives the DCT of 10 nephrons approximately. Now this is one collecting duct. There would be another collecting duct. All these collecting ducts, they open together into one common tube. This is known as the duct of Bellini. And duct of Bellini is opening into this narrower part of the medullary pyramid. So duct of Bellini opens into the medullary pyramid or at the bottom narrow part of the pyramid. From here, if you are able to recall the structure, we said there are tubes which would be collecting these filtrates from the renal, sorry, from the medullary pyramids and we would call them minor calyx. Many such minor calyces would join to form a major calyx, so this would be major calyx and major calyces open into this funnel like structure which is the opening of the ureter which we call the renal pelvis region. So this is the major calyx which opens into this renal pelvis. And from renal pelvis, it comes out through the ureter. So this is the ureter. Now, the filtration which takes place in the Bowman's capsule, which results <coughs> sorry, in formation of nephric filtrate. This nephric filtrate passes through PCT, loop of NLE, DCT and comes into the collecting duct. Many collecting ducts join to form duct of Bellini. Many Bellinis open into the pyramid. At the bottom of the pyramid, pyramids open into minor calyx, minor calyces open into major calyx and then it comes into renal pelvis and ureter. So if we have to write the path of the urine which is being formed or the filtrate which is being formed 
the path would be nephron from the nephron and we are talking of nephron up to BCT. So from here it comes to collecting duct. From collecting duct it is coming to duct of Bellini. Duct of Bellini. From duct of Bellini it would come to renal pyramid that is the narrow region or renal or medullary pyramid. Medullary pyramid from medullary pyramid or the base of it into minor calyx from minor calyx to major calyx and then renal pelvis and then into ureter. So now all that filtrate which is there has been converted into urine by the time it comes into collecting that. We said when the plasma gets filtered and the filtrate is first formed in the Bowman's capsule, we call it nephric filtrate. By the time it comes into collecting duct, all the useful things have been absorbed and we start calling it urine. So this is the urine which is flowing here. This urine comes through the ureter into the bladder. So this is the ureter and again as we said we wanted to emphasize more on this. So we are drawing a short ureter and let us see how it opens into the bladder. This is not proportionate. We are just making this so that we understand the conduction properly. This is the bladder which is normally a pear shaped structure. The bladder and this is the narrow portion. And let us say this is the ureter and bring it like this. It comes here, then it opens in this region. So one ureter is going to open here, the other one is going to open here. So this is the, oh we have already labeled it. Let us label this. This is urinary bladder. Urinary bladder is with smooth muscles. It has smooth muscles which are known as detrusor muscles. Important name, many a times this name has been asked in questions. So it is lined with smooth muscles. These are involuntary muscles and the muscles are called detrusor muscles. Plus, the inner lining is of transitional epithelium line with transitional epithelium and because of which it stretches it is distensible it can store about 0.5 that is half a liter to one liter of urine of urine normally it can store the stimulus is generated when the bladder is slightly more than half full. We'll see that a little later. We have also talked of this region which is known as the trigon. Here there are three openings. These two openings of the two ureter, one from this side, other from the other side. And this is the urethra. So this tube is urethra. And if we can make it like a tube, this tube also has two openings, the inner opening and the outer. This opening is the place from where the urethra originates. So here we call it origin of urethra. And this origin is guarded by two sphincters. Guarded by two sphincters. Sphincters are circular muscles. The inner is made up of smooth muscles and the outer is made up of skeletal muscles. So there are two sphincters. Now this is the last tube which is there. This is the urethra. And this urethra 
is 4 centimeters long in case of females and it is 20 centimeters long in case of males. In males, it acts as a common ejaculatory duct. So, the conduction from ureter, the ureter is going to come into bladder and it will be eliminated through this urethra. So, if we would add few things there. After ureter, it comes into urinary bladder and through urethritis eliminated. So, this is the path through which the urine gets conducted. Now, there is one more term which we have to add here and that is called micturition. Micturition means voiding of the urine or the basic process by which the urine is thrown out of the body. So this is voiding of urine or which is commonly known as urination. So that process is termed as micturition. Micturition is a reflex action. It is stimulated by a reflex basically. So it is a reflex. And reflex action means it is the spinal cord which is going to help in this. And when is the reflex generated? Reflex is generated when the bladder is slightly more than half full. So reflex is generated when bladder is half or slightly more than half full. Then that stimulus is generated and by reflex action this urine is released from the body. These, the bladder and here when we say reflex is generated, the stimulus is sent to the muscles of the, ure of the urinary bladder. So these detrusor muscles contract and these sphincters they relax and that is how this urine is released from the body. So because of this, the next process which is taking place here is contraction of bladder and relaxation of sphincters. That is how this micturition takes place. So bladder muscles contract and the sphincters which are at the origin of urethra, they are relaxed. And urination takes place. Stimulus is sent when the bladder is slightly more than half full and it is by reflex action. So initially, basically we can say that micturition is a reflex action. But in adults, this voiding of urine or urination can be delayed voluntarily. So this delay is controlled by an inhibitory center which is on Pons. So we will write this here. Micturition or let me just say micturition delayed by inhibitory center on pons which is on the brain uh, stem and this is only done in case of uh, adults or especially when the children are able to hold urine for a little longer time. When they are very small, the urine control or the bladder control which we call is not there because they are not able to delay it and they are not able to control this movement. But this can be voluntarily delayed in adults and the delaying center is the inhibitory center which is on pons. So this is again which is a voluntary action. 
but normal urination or maturation is a reflex action. So this is controlled by spinal cord. And here the brain plays an important role because the inhibitory center is on palms. So this is how the conduction of urine takes place and the process by which it is released from the body is known as micturition. So the path of conduction we have written there and this is how this process takes place. Important name which is to be removed is, uh, to be remembered is the muscles of the bladder which are smooth muscles called detrusor muscles and bladder is internally lined with transitional epithelium and because of which it can stretch. So when it holds urine it can stretch and it is called a distensible uh, structure. Release is micturition, it is reflex and spinal cord is responsible for this but adults can delay this urination and that control center which is an inhibitory center is on pons. So conduction of urine and micturition, this is the detailed process.